Good morning everybody on this cold winter's morning out here. It's a beautiful day and I hope you have a fantastic day as well. Last week we, we started a bit of a study in Proverbs and uh, we looked at the ants. Proverbs 6 talks about the wisdom of the ants. And uh, as I've been pondering that this week, I realized there's still so much that we can learn from these amazing little creatures. So let me read to you that p passage again from Proverbs chapter 6, and, uh, and we'll pick up from there. From verse 6 onwards. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, and a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, and poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. Wonderful warning, very practical warning from Proverbs, but that's, that's the nature of the book of Proverbs. It's an incredibly practical, practical book. But when we, we look at this particular passage, I wonder if he's not referring to the issue of work. We tend to think that work is a bit of a curse. I have to get up every morning, go to work and work for a grumpy boss and, and then get paid at the end of the month something I think is less than I'm worth. And we think that work is more of, of a curse. And very often we look back to the Garden of Eden to justify that thinking. But that's not true at all. The fact of the matter as it relates to this thing called work is the fact that, that God has designed us to work. God has said it is good that you should work. Even back in the garden, God gave to Adam and to Eve work to do. They had to care for this beautiful garden. They had to make sure that it was looked after. They had to, they had to name the animals. They had to do a whole bunch of stuff that all would fall under the covering of this word called work. So work is not a curse. Worse is not a con work is not a consequence of sin. It is in fact designed by God to be a blessing. Remember too that we are designed to work. Men need to work. Men in particular, because if men don't work, they get themselves into all sorts of trouble and do stuff they should never do. A man is designed to work right through to the end of his days. We have some great heroes in our church here who never understood the word retirement. They just, they just retreaded themselves and they just carried on working right through to the end. I have nothing against guys who have made it in life and earned some money and want to go and sit and fish and play golf. But I have to tell you, I think that might be a little bit of a, a waste. There's so much that you men and you women have accumulated over the course of time that could add such value to somebody else's life, to those young next generation of people coming through. Your work should continue, I think, to the end of your days, to the best that you're able to do. When you look at the ant, it's intriguing because an ant is designed to work and he can carry 25 to 50 times his own weight. He's designed to do that. And if the comparison in Proverbs is to an ant, then I would suggest that maybe we are designed, maybe not to carry that amount of load, but certainly to carry some load and to, to work. When we think of ants, we think of these typical little creatures that just, uh, we see them around, we, we tend to think that they might be a bit of a, a nuisance, but I think that there's an awful lot that we can learn from these wonderful things. I've often wondered, you know, when ants are, are working, and uh, they're dragging their little piece of grass towards the, the hole that they're going to be storing it up for winter. Uh, I, I watch as they, they, they follow a particular path. They seem to have navigated a route. And then when they're walking this path, every ant coming in the opposite direction, they seem to stop, bump heads, and, and communicate with them. I, I wonder what they say to each other. I wonder, I wonder if they greet each other when they stop. They don't just bypass, they walk straight up, bump into their heads into one another. I wonder if they're greeting each other. Maybe they're complaining about how hard the work is. But I don't think so. I think they're applauding one another and cheering one another's. I wish I could speak ant language. But the fact is that ants look like they're enjoying their work. They look like work is a reason to get out of bed in the morning and they have a real passion to do it. Now we try as parents to 
uh, inculcate into our kids a good work ethic, don't we? I can remember as a kid having from the earliest days having to make my bed and my parents would, would make me get out of bed and if my bed wasn't made before I went to school then there were consequences to that. I had to work from an early age. As I got older, they made me feed the dogs. We had a lot of dogs. We used to have to chop the meat by hand. We didn't just throw dog pellets down. I had a job at every phase of my life. But the funny thing was that the, the, the job was the job, but my attitude to do the job was something that I chose. I chose that attitude, just like you will have to choose yours towards work. I'm saddened to think that the issue of work in our minds has kind of become corrupted now we work to make money. I'm not so sure that that's biblical. I think that we should work to fulfill our calling. And our calling, when our calling comes and combines with our careers, that's when we really find the meaning of this beautiful thing that God designed to be a blessing called work. When career is something that you do to make money, your calling is something that you do to make a difference and when you can combine those two things and your career becomes your calling that is amazing and you can take your calling as a Christian as a follower of Jesus into your workplace and uh, and make that into a calling that God has called all of us to be I hope that today you think about that truth and that you turn whatever you do by way of work into a calling that God has ordained for you to do and a purpose for which he has created you. I hope you have a great day. Just a, a, a shout out there to the Baileys over in, in Ireland. Uh, just uh, lots of love to you guys. So sorry about the passing of your sister Davy. Uh, we're praying for you. We love you. We miss you guys a lot. But have a great day for all, all, of, all that you do. And the rest of us, let's go out there and save the world.